Welcome. In this section, we're going to discuss trend trades, and we're going to discuss the rules and looks for when it's okay and not okay to take trend trades. Really, we're going to boil trend trades down into three simple components. Number one, the setup to make sure that our large chart, Fibonacci, and trigger lines agree with the trade setup itself and that the charts have synergy. Number two, to double check to make sure that we haven't yet reached a target or don't have the wrong condition before we do our trade. And then number three, we're going to define where and when exactly to place a trade using our indicators and in the synergy on the charts. Now, it's very important when we look at our charts to start with the large chart first. And when you read the Fibonacci and trigger lines correctly on your larger chart, it's going to really increase your chances for success when doing trend trades. You must always make sure that your 14-2 trigger lines have a strength and location advantage. Without that advantage, you're going to end up doing the wrong trades and having losers. So in the following section, we're going to discuss which looks are best, worst, and which looks are going to give you a really good chance of winning depending on what the smaller chart configuration is. Now you're going to start off with our small trigger lines and large trigger lines, which you've already learned in the previous video for the basics of our indicators. And again, we're going to use this a lot. Small triggers up above our large triggers that are going up is going to be our number one best look for a long trade. And when the small triggers are going down strong below our large triggers, it's going to give us the best look for short trades. And then when we have to really read our Fibonacci areas is when the small triggers are inside of the large triggers. Because anything can happen, and usually the supporting uh, Fibonacci areas, whether they're support or resistance, are going to make a real big difference when the small triggers are between the large triggers. So to look at it in a real world situation. When we reach Fibonacci resistance, we're going to have to immediately look at our small triggers and our large triggers. And if both of them are very strong and going up, and what I mean is the small triggers wide up and located physically above the large triggers, this Fibonacci resistance is going to break. <clears throat> and again, look, it's okay for support and resistance to break. Um, the only support number that will hold indefinitely will be zero, and we don't want to get there. Uh, so when we can anticipate a Fibonacci resistance breaking, we can then, with a couple of rules, buy a pullback and trade in the direction of the trend. And again, this is the condition up here where we said the small triggers are in between our large triggers. And this is the condition where the market may potentially make a reversal. Now, when we get to Fibonacci support and resistance, again, it's very important to read your triggers. And sometimes when you reach a resistance, the trigger lines are very strong, as you see here. So it's very important to wait until the small triggers have crossed below and are below the resistance. And again, sometimes the large triggers are not always crossed down, but because of the resistance area, we're willing to take an opportunity to go short. Uh, and again, the small triggers must at least be on the correct side of the large triggers when we're at a Fibonacci support or resistance. And you'll see the same concept uh, echoed down here. So again, look at the market. It's going down into Fibonacci support. Well, initially, the trigger lines are going down. Uh, so we're not going to do any trend trades in this area because once we hit support, we're going to stop going short. So what we're really looking for is we're looking for our small triggers to be crossed up and we want the small triggers to be located at or above the large triggers. And this is the case where we're going to look to buy a pullback. So again, think of it this way. We hit support, you're going to wait. And then if the trigger lines roll up, you're going to do a long trade. Again, when we reach support, sometimes the trigger lines are going down. And this is the location component of what we're talking about with our trigger lines. If our small trigger lines are physically below the large trigger lines that are going down, this is going to create, or if you were to take a long trade here, and again, it's think about the differences in these two slides. 
Here you hit Fibonacci support and then the trigger lines roll up and they get above or at the large triggers. In this slide, if we hit support and the trigger lines roll up, if they're still located below the large triggers, we don't really have a trade uh, that's a very high probability trade. And I took a picture of what happens next because this is very typical. And again, look, we don't really mind what happens one way or the other. If the small triggers had enough strength to make it above the large triggers, we'd do a long trade. Because the small triggers didn't have enough strength to get above the large triggers, what we're going to have to do is wait. And again, we have a concept that we're going to talk about a lot, and you'll see it hundreds of times, if not thousands of times. If you reach a support or resistance area, what we're going to look for is for all four trigger lines to either be above or below that support or resistance. So in this case, what we're looking at is support, but the trigger lines do not help with long trade thoughts because the smalls are below the large. So in this case, what we're going to end up doing is waiting. And then once we have four trigger lines, again, below the resistance now or below support, this is the spot where it's okay for us to start looking for short trades. And again, once, I mean, immediately three and a half triggers below, if we get a short here, that's great. And then you can see a little bit further, we have a really strong wide down trigger below wide down large triggers. And obviously this is in the white circle is an optimal look for us to take short trades. When we, you know, again, this is another chart where you can kind of see three different scenarios. Number one, strong triggers usually break Fibonacci. So again, it's just recognizing what the trigger line configuration is when you hit resistance. <clears throat> and again, it's the number one thing is we're not going short at this spot. And again, sometimes when we get to support or resistance, the optimal thing for us to do is wait. And then once four triggers are beyond the Fibonacci resistance, usually it turns to support. And then we look to buy a pullback with the trend up until the next Fibonacci resistance. And again, this is another termination condition for us. We're going to stop going long if we reach Fibonacci resistance and we do not get four triggers to go past the resistance. <clears throat> so up here at the top, you can see our small triggers are inside of the large triggers, which is our warning. And then number two, we hit Fibonacci resistance without any triggers located above the red line, which means we're going down. And again, the market goes down. And again, we're not talking about trades yet. We're just talking about reading fibs and triggers. So when we hit support, again, no more short trades for us unless we have four triggers that are below the FIBS. And you can see very clearly our trigger lines are way above the FIBS. So again, this is a Fibonacci support that we would anticipate to hold. And then as we trade back up to the highs, you can see with the trigger line configuration, the Fibonacci's are supposed to break. And it's through reading support and resistance in reading the trigger lines that allows us to avoid areas where we have both triggers going up, triggers going down, support for up, resistance for down. This is the area where we wait. And if we wait patiently, once we have four triggers below the Fibonacci support, you can see it turns to resistance. And not only do we have our wide trigger line configuration, but we now have resistance that's anticipated to hold which will take us down to the next Fibonacci support. And again, when we reach Fibonacci support, reading the trigger lines, giving us the ability to either wait for a breakout or wait for the triggers to roll up to start doing long trades. So it's really important conceptually. The correct trigger line reading is the key to confidence at your Fibonacci areas. With correct Fibonacci and trigger line reading, you're going to trade the markets with confidence. You're going to only do high probability trades. You're going to have the same look, most importantly, <clears throat> giving you the ability to be consistent and only recognizing high probability trades. When you read your fibs and triggers incorrectly, you're going to have lower probability trades. 
more than most likely you're going to end up losing these trades and this is where it's important for you to post in your pictures in class so we can point out if you have read your Fibonacci and trigger lines correctly. So annotating and posting your charts while you're learning is very important during our class. And again, it's very, very important, no matter what trade you're doing, that you have our correct Fibonacci and trigger line reading. So we'll go a little bit further. And again, this is a little bigger snapshot, but as the, as the different looks unfold, if you reach divergence lines, so divergence or divergence indicator is these little negative numbers that generate magenta lines and cyan lines. And essentially, they're denoting pivot points at the top or bottom where there was divergence between our MACD indicator and price. And again, I'll show you that in a little bit, but the short version is you're going to treat these major pivots on a 14-2 chart just like any other support or resistance with Fibonacci. So if we have divergence lines and we do not get four triggers above it, it's probably going to go down. And if we get to a cyan line, at a major pivot low and we don't have four triggers below it, it's probably going to go back up. And then ultimately this is where the trend trader is going to have to play the waiting game until four triggers actually break above the Fib resistance and then we're going to have some pretty easy high probability long trades. Then as you see as we trade up into resistance, very common, small triggers inside of the large triggers, negative divergence number, the market's going to go the other way. And for the trend trader, what we're waiting for is for these small triggers to be going down with these large triggers going down. And then we're going to use our smaller and larger charts to try to sell pullbacks. And again, you're going to see this same process repeat itself, sometimes even way later on a chart. If you get to a divergence low and not four triggers get passed, this is where you end up with a low probability trend trade. And again, just recognizing any support or resistance needs to get trigger lines beyond it or else it usually will reverse. And after the reversal, then when all the triggers are going in the same direction, we're going to have some very easy trend trades. Now, one of the other things that's going to terminate a trend, not only reaching Fibonacci support or resistance, uh, but these little yellow one-to-one -one dots. And they're called one-to-ones. That's what we call them. And I'll show you in the next slide how we actually create these. But whenever these yellow dots are uh, very near to support or resistance, generally it has a very strong termination condition. So if the yellow dots are at support, the market will usually go the other way. And if the triggers roll up and are favorable, you can take a long trade. Same thing at resistance. If you get to resistance, if you have yellow dots, there's a very high coincidence of the market going down, especially if the small triggers are inside of the large triggers. And again, for a trend trader, this is more of a stop going long. And then if the trigger lines roll, then we get the opportunity to do some short trades. Now the one to ones themselves, uh, it's basically an A, B equals C and D to D. <clears throat> and what we do is the indicator will measure the distance from one swing to the high. And then after some sort of retracement, uh, after we start to trend back up again, which is denoted by higher highs or higher lows, uh, it will take the distance from A to B and project that distance from the low of the retracement giving us a one-to-one, -one, this swing equals this swing, Elliott wave, uh, people call it wave similarity, AB equals CD, Fibonacci people call it a 100% Fibonacci alternate. And more importantly for you, what you need to know is that we're going to use these yellow dots a lot. And when they coincide with support or resistance or entries or exits, on our charts, they become extra powerful. And you'll see a bunch of examples of that as we go along. One of the other things that you're going to see with our FIBs, and this is where uh, you're going to be put into a situation where you have Fibonacci support on your 14-2 chart. And it's a low probability look for trend trades. Even though both triggers are going down strong, the fact that the location is wrong lowers the probability of your winning. 
So if the large triggers are located well above your blue Fibonacci support, right, and support is support because it's blue, and the triggers, the small triggers are below, you really get this kind of 50-50 look. 50% 50 of your triggers are above, 50% are your below. It also creates a 50-50 opportunity for you winning a trade. Now, do you take 50-50 trades or do you not take 50-50 trades? In some later slides, when we get to the smaller charts, we'll show you some examples. Again, just to kind of reiterate the point, obviously, if all the triggers are going up, we're going to buy support. <clears throat> if two triggers only break a support area and the large triggers don't break it, this is a warning for us that you get a fake breakout. And again, everybody who's day traded has been the victim of a fake breakout where you're trying to go short, but it just never reverses. And again, this is a very simple, very easy technique for us around our Fibonacci and support areas to tell us that it's a fake breakout. And again, a second version of the same thing over here on the right. Only two triggers break Fibs. And again, you must be mindful that a breakout uh, is being, you know, it's it's a fake breakout, basically, is what we call. And really what we're looking for, and again, I think it's a very visually easy thing to see. Large triggers going down, small triggers going down, which is great, but they're straddling one above, one below support. So really what we're waiting for before we do a trade is for this. We're waiting for support to hold and then the triggers to roll, and then we get an opportunity to do a trend trade. The same thought process uh, happens when, uh, again, remember what we talked about with these divergence lines? Again, whenever we see these divergence lines and the triggers are really close together, the market has a tendency to reverse. Now, there is an exception to if the market's hitting support. And this is where the large and small triggers are much tighter or more compact or call it closer together, if you will. Um, this close togetherness, and remember our first slide. In our first slide, remember this really compact closeness together of our trigger lines. This represents a very nice wound up momentum that usually makes the market continue. So same thing, the farther they get away, it's still good, but when they're really compact together, it's even better. So when you've had some type of termination condition, either fibs or a pivot stop out of divergence, and then you have this tight, compact look, this is where we're going to go to our smaller charts, and we're going to start reading if we have a perfect look of resistance and triggers and indicators that all come together in that same spot to give us an opportunity even though we have support because of the close proximity and tightness if you will of the trigger lines we're going to anticipate the market's going to continue down which it obviously does so again it's you know there are fibs that will hold and then there are fibs that will break and again recognizing the trigger line configuration is going to be very, very helpful in determining the right trades to take. So in a typical day, you may get to Fibonacci support, and then you have to wait for your trend trade. And after the triggers roll up, you'll get one trend trade to the long side. Now, the trend doesn't continue, and then we retest support. And again, retesting support with the triggers all down all we have to do is wait. So one of two things is going to happen. Either support will hold and then the triggers will roll up and we'll keep doing long trades or small triggers will start to break below support. And again, this is kind of your warning sign that um, we may break out to the downside. And then once we have four triggers in a really good configuration below what was support now is resistance, this again turns into the four trigger lines passed and it turns into our number one high probability trend trade look to the short side. And again, it's avoiding this mess in the middle that really is going to separate uh, the really good winners from the choppy areas where you'll end up losing money 
to the really high probability looks that will generate easier money and higher probability trades for you. Again, this is a different chart, but same thought. Fibs may hold because the triggers are, you know, going up and going down. There's none breaking below. But because the small triggers are below the large, we're not going to go long. And again, this is another situation where, you know, this happened at 1048 in the morning. It took until almost 1130, you know, it took almost 50 minutes for the configuration to become correct. So once both the Fib Fibonacci area and the trigger lines agree, Fib resistance and small triggers below, we have a good look that will give us a much better trend trade. Now, you may start off with a trend trade on your 14-2 chart, and then eventually it makes a retracement. And usually when it makes a retracement, it's going to go back up and test the edge of resistance. And when we get to the edge of resistance, we have to anticipate whether or not it's going to hold. The farther away the large triggers are, and usually there's a whole bar's worth of distance, and there's a little reversal bar marker that marks where the bar is going to make a reversal bar marker, a little white one, see up here at the top. So the farther away the large triggers are, the more likely the Fibonacci resistance is to hold. <clears throat> now for edge traders, this is a really powerful look to go short with a prevailing trend. Right? For trend traders, you have to wait until the trigger lines cross over and then are at or below the large triggers. So you get two different types of trades. But again, reading your fibs and reading where the trigger lines are located, it's going to tell you whether or not the air is going to hold. And then as the market's going up, you know, again, this is a very common occurrence where all four trigger lines are pushing very hard into a Fibonacci resistance area. Sometimes they hold, and if they do, the triggers will roll down, so we're going to wait for that. Sometimes they break. And again, if they break, usually we're going to retest Fibonacci support. And again, we have to be able to determine in advance whether or not Fib support is going to hold. And again, the visual representation of the reversal bar marker, see the 3418, that's the price at which the market's going to go back up. And if these large triggers are close to that reversal bar marker, usually that's enough to call it far away to give you something a little more or less ambiguous, I guess, and to be able to anticipate that this support may hold. Now, trend trading, you know, there's not a trade to be had there, but this is where Fibonacci reading for our edge traders is going to be very important. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at our middle chart. And for us, you know, when we're day trading things like crude oil or some of the other markets, gold or S&Ps, the 8-2 chart is our middle chart. And this middle chart is going to be read the same way we read our 14-2 chart. So you don't really need to learn anything new. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our rules for where to get in and when to get in still give us an advantage over the market. And more importantly, we're going to use this 8-2 chart to help us define when we lose our advantage to be in a trend trade and whether we have to stay in or whether we have to get out. So it's going to be very important in management. So again, first things first, we have to start with a large chart trigger line read. And again, I added in this slide because this happens sometimes where the market will be going down and everything is perfect for a sell and we go short. And then sometimes the market doesn't cooperate. Most of the time we get an opportunity to manage our position so for no loss. Sometimes you take a loss. Um, either way, I wanted to add this slide in because sometimes you break a fib but then you unbreak it. And when you unbreak a fib, it's the really strong small triggers, even though the large triggers are not yet above resistance, so you don't have four above. You have to anticipate that the fibs are going to turn blue, and they do early on the smaller charts, because it was a fake out breakout, where they break out, but they tricked you, and then they go the other way. <clears throat> and a lot of times this happens in a prevailing uptrend, where it'll look like it's changing down, and then they change their mind. And 
what we're going to do when we look at the 8.2 chart is we're going to stare at the trigger line configuration. Whenever we do a trend trade, we're going to look at the trigger configuration on the 14.2 chart and get our check mark. And then we really want to see the same configuration on the 8.2 trigger lines. We want to see the small triggers above the large triggers going up and then we can start looking at our smaller chart for support so we can do trend trade longs. And you're going to see how when you're reading your charts and you start from your 14-2 chart first, which is on the left here, and recognizing, remember the condition we talked about if the small triggers are below the large chart? So even though we have support and even though the small triggers rolled up, they're physically located below the large triggers, which is a not a favorable look for going long. So as you start to learn our software and read our software, um, you're going to get very excited because you're going to recognize on the 8-2 chart strong triggers and strong triggers and you got support. So you're seeing trend trade long. But you're not going to take it, or you may actually take it and lose it. But um, the idea is to not take these trend trade longs on the small chart when the large chart doesn't agree. So what we're talking about is really high probability trades where all three charts trigger line configuration agrees. And again, these are the trend trades that they'll win maybe 25% of the time, but 75% of the time they lose. So, and we're really trading for the 75% of the time when we're doing high probability trades. And no matter how far you go back, you know, again, every trade, if you start off, and again, I want you to think 14-2 triggers going up strong, 8-2 triggers going up strong, buy a pullback. And again, this is an older picture, but it's the same thought process. Buy a pullback at the fibs and the mid bands and the triggers as long as the 8-2 triggers are above all the other triggers even if they cross down a little bit it's okay location is key on the 8-2 chart and I want you to think about your goals obviously you want to make money and we believe that trend trades are going to be the best way for you to start with the simulator We're, they're going to be the easiest trades to read because all of your trigger lines are going to be going the same way and we want you to trade on the simulator until you can guarantee yourself you can make at least $400 a day without risking any money. And again, once you get to the point of funding a live account, fund a small one. And if you start losing, stop right away because you're going to see that you shouldn't really have many losing days or trades at all with super high probability trades. So if you're losing, stop immediately, reevaluate and keep your losses really small. Because bottom line, look, if you can't start with three or five thousand dollars and you can't make four hundred dollars a day with a small account, you're never going to make money with more. So, again, consistency while you're learning is the most important thing, because all you need is two little trades a day that win to make four hundred dollars a day trading something like crude oil. And if you can do that and you can do it consistently, then you can take that winning high probability trade and compound more. So again, all this is going to start on simulator first. And again, this is why NextGen, you know, after 23 years um, uh, has been so consistent because it's easy to read. It's very duplicatable and you can use this method really on any market. Day trade Bitcoin if you want, gold futures, S&P futures, it doesn't really matter. The concept of fibs and triggers is universal and dynamic. So let's look at first the large chart. Triggers are going down, but we hit support. So we're waiting, 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 and then eventually the trigger lines roll up and they're favorable for going long. So once these triggers roll up, we look at our 8-2 chart triggers. On the 8-2 chart, the small triggers are very strong up above the large triggers, which is the most favorable look. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in at wherever, whatever support line, whether it's the green line, the white dotted line, blue fibs or yellow dots, whatever line happens to be at the 8-2 triggers, that's the spot where we're looking to buy the market. And essentially we're looking for 20 ticks. 
So we're going to buy on the way down into 22.71 and we're going to get out at 22.91 on the way up. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead, but we'll start talking about divergences and multiple divergences, which are these little negative numbers right here. And again, management of trades, which I don't mean to jump too far ahead, but if the large triggers don't cross up after your first trend trade, it's one trend trade and done. So you get the first one, but you're not going to take another trend trade if these large triggers don't come along because sometimes you get one and then it goes back down and retest your FIBS. We're also going to use our A2 chart for reading the triggers to decide when to stay into a position. So if we get into a position, again, it's, it's the same thing. It's 14.2 triggers have to be strong and down. 8.2 triggers have to be strong and down. The stronger these two triggers are down on the 14.2 and 8.2 chart, sometimes you have to put your limit order to get in a couple of price levels below where the actual resistance is. So again, this is one that gets a lot of new people because they'll miss an entry because they're trying to sell 22.33, where people that sold 22.31 or 32 actually get a fill and get short. So again, it's you know really essential that you're able to determine at the time of entry how strong both of these triggers are because you may have to give up a tick or two to get a fill. Now, we're also going to use this same concept for when to stay in a trade. So the stronger the small triggers are on the 8-2 chart and the more they're below the large triggers, the more we're inclined to stay in a position longer until we reach some type of support either on the you know, larger or smaller charts or maybe even just the larger charts. Especially when you have both triggers outside, usually that's where we end up getting a little bit larger move. So. The rule is when the small triggers remain outside of the 8-2 large triggers, we're going to hang on for a little more money. So let's look at this. Uh, again, this is going the other way just to kind of give you an idea. Strong triggers up on the 14-2 chart has to be first. Number two, strong triggers up before the entry on the 5-1 chart. So again, assuming that you're buying support inside of the 8-2 dotted triggers on your large chart, you get into your position and then you get a bar up and you put your stop below the pivot, right? So once you make an up bar, you put reduce your risk. Now, this is where we have to slide back over to our 8-2 triggers and we have to say, okay, they're up and they're above the other triggers, so we're going to hang on until we reach some type of target. So the idea behind what we do is we're trying to buy into the support area on the way down and we're trying to sell the target area on the way up. You ever heard the old adage, buy low, sell high? Well, this is exactly what we're trying to do day in and day out. Now, watching the 8-2 triggers, again, look at the you know progression. We hit Fibonacci resistance, no triggers break above. So resistance holds. Triggers cross down strong, so we're probably doing trend trade shorts, right, on our smaller chart, 5-1 chart. And we're reading our small triggers thinking to ourselves, yay, we're going to stay in it and we're going to get down to blue Fibonacci support, which is great. That's the right thought. But sometimes conditions change. And usually once the small triggers get back inside of the large triggers, that's a warning to us, remember, and on the 8-2 chart, normally they're going to make a larger retracement back up to a higher area, maybe to get a bigger running head start at going down to the next Fibonacci resistance. So again, depending on whether you're an edge trader using the 14-2 chart or, you know, quicker trend trades or more conservative high momentum trigger line trend trades, it's going to tell you get in. Stay in, stay in, stay in. Uh-oh, watch out. Be out of your position. Wait for the bigger retracement to happen. Wait for the triggers to roll back over. And then you get high probability trend trade to get the rest of the move. 
And you're going to see this over and over and over again. So starting from the bottom left down here, obviously the trigger lines are going up and they're above the large triggers going up. So this is a case where here and here, which represents here and here, you're going to end up doing a couple of trend trade longs. And again, when the small triggers get inside of the large triggers, it starts to weaken the trend. So remember we talked about divergences and some of these negative numbers creating resistance or divergence. If you are in a trend trade and you see the triggers weaken and you have divergence or second divergence, we call this a pivot stop out. This is the time up here where we recognize because of the weakness that the trend may end. So it allows us to take a long trade and then maybe a second long trade and then it allows us to get very defensive right here and manage our position, <clears throat> which you see the market does eventually go down. Now it doesn't mean it's going to go down forever. All right, just like the last slide, the market's going to go back up and retest the major area. And if the 14-2 chart still agrees, then we can do some other type of trade. Same thing when it goes, retraces back down. So we get 5-1 trend trade when the 8-2 chart agrees. When the 8-2 chart doesn't, it makes a bigger retracement back to a major area. And again, usually from these major areas with the trend, this is where our edge traders are doing their edge trades. Which, again, we're not talking about edge trades, but you can kind of see the progression from trend trade, trend trade, weakness, pivot stop out, bigger retracement back to the major area, and then it goes back up. Very, very common uh, for that look to happen. And we're also going to be able to use our small triggers when we're trading from the edges of Fibonacci resistances. And it's very simple. This is also what changes the background color on the 5-1 chart and the 8-2 chart. When the small triggers are physically below the large triggers, especially at resistance, we have a pretty good chance of resistance holding. And then obviously the market goes down and you can see a little pivot stop out at our yellow one-to-ones and the small triggers are actually above the large triggers. Again, this is where some of the market flow traders or some of the edge traders are looking to go long. For trend traders, this ends up being your one trade. So this is the support holding triggers are above. You get one trend trade. So again, there's some benefits, obviously, later in your next gen career to trading some of the edges. Initially, we want new users to really perfect the trend trade so you can make some money with the really easy ones. Then you can add on some of the fancy trades a little bit later. So to review trend trade rules, number one, make sure your large and medium chart trigger lines agree, that all three charts agree and have synergy. Number two, make sure you have not yet hit a target or termination condition. And make sure you have room to your targets and good trigger lines so you can manage your trades accordingly. And then number three, we're going to get into this one, you know, now a little bit more with the smaller 5-1 chart. We're going to spend time defining and placing entries at the correct spot so you're doing the right trades inside of the triggers at the support areas. And we'll take a look at that on this next chart. So on this chart, what we want to do is we want to be able to be consistent. So reading your 14-2 chart and recognizing strong trigger lines, recognizing strong trigger lines on your 8-2 chart is going to tell you on the high that you're going to buy a pullback. <clears throat> and what we're looking to do is we're looking to buy some support that's in between our large and small triggers. You're going to see the same thing to the downside. And again, these pictures are a little bit older, but it's same thought. Small triggers going down strong, 8-2 triggers going down strong. So at this moment in time on the low, and again, to make money selling the high, you have to anticipate where that high is going to be when it's on the low. So this is the moment in time on the low that we've made up our mind that we're going to sell somewhere up here. And remember what we said about the strength of the small triggers versus the large on both charts? If it's really strong on both, we're going to sell the first resistance line that's in between the two large triggers. <clears throat> and again, to place an order, 
you know, the physical process of placing an order, which we don't talk about a lot, but if you have questions, ask in class. Make sure you always have your stop and target strategy active. Without protective stops and targets, um, you're really trading with a lot of additional risk, so make sure that you've got those turned on. And to buy the market or place an order, literally, look, you're going to right mouse click on a chart at a particular price, and you're going to left mouse click on buy limit, and that's all there is to placing an order. Very, very, very simple. <clears throat> make sure you've got your chart trader up. Make sure you've got your stops and targets on. Right click on your chart. Buy limit at whatever price. And then you're off to the races. <clears throat> and again, look, we anticipate on the lows that we're going to sell whatever resistance is in between the two 82 trigger lines. So again, the stronger it is down, we may have to give up a tick or two. So the only resistance is our mid band here inside of the eight two triggers. So we're going to place an order around 21.52 or 51. So if and when the market retraces back up, we're going to go short. Um, so what you're going to see on literally every trade you do, it's going to be the same look. And this is why we beg and plead and tell you that it's very imperative that you annotate your charts so you can determine and say and show and prove consistency with strong down triggers on your large chart before you do a trade and that your eight two triggers are down and below the large triggers and that's going to enable you to pick the right spot and the right trade in order to make two hundred dollars a couple of times a day so it's really important that you've got this three chart synergy, strong down triggers, strong down triggers, selling a pullback to resistance, taking your $200 when you get it. And again, no matter what chart you're, you see, you're going to see the same thing. Large and small triggers, both trending up, eight, two triggers above all others, buying a pullback to the mid bands and fibs that are inside of the eight, two triggers little different chart template some of our older traders have this chart template so uh, but it's again same look same rules just different colors a little bit again even the older chart templates or the new chart templates they all have synergy right large and small triggers down small triggers down and below the large triggers looking for the resistance inside of the eight two large triggers to determine when and where we're going to get in and then obviously trying to trade to the next Fibonacci support. Now, just to kind of fine tune this just a little bit more again, remember what we're doing on the high, right? And again, this is from a class, but the indicators say what strong triggers up above large triggers, right? On both charts. And again, when they're very, very strong, the reason I say this, and I've kind of stressed this one a little bit, you know, if it's not too strong, it might go a little bit deeper into the support window. If it's nuclear strong on the A2 chart, you almost never get very deep on the 5-1 chart. So it's really important that when you're doing trend trades on the 5-1 chart, if you can really determine that super strong look on both charts, you're going to have to place a limit order maybe a tick or two above the first area. Because if you're a little nervous about your trade and you're saying, well, I'm not really sure, so I'm going to put it way down here, you're going to miss a lot of money. And again, this is where practice, practice, practice. Um, even if it gets to the lower end of support, it's okay as long as your stop is down here. You're not going to get stopped out if it goes four more ticks down. So again, missing $200 is very expensive. Risking a couple of extra ticks is not that expensive. Um, again, everybody's going to get these. When it's super strong down and super strong down and you're going to recognize sometimes there's no fibs. So sometimes it's just a mid band all by itself, which is perfectly adequate. Um, but again, sometimes these really strong moves, we get some big ones. One of the other more important things that uh, we really love to see is plenty of room to the Fibonacci targets. And then again, look, when we get to a Fib, we have to determine, you know, immediately what's going to happen. So 14.2 chart, 
triggers are in between not four triggers pass this is where we stop doing short trades so we start doing short trades and we stop doing short trades just as quick again we're gonna go really take a look at a lot of small chart opportunities here small charts for fine-tuning entries and exits um, you're really operating on the smallest chart you're reading the larger charts but you're really trading from the smaller chart trigger line reading during a trade is important as we've showed you with the 8-2 charts as the 8-2 chart weakens with we're going to talk about divergences and Fibonacci areas and pivot stop outs that's going to end your trend trade and more importantly if you're in a trade and you lose your advantage to the market then we're going to use those conditions to manage or exit your position all right so a key concept I want you to really think about and when you're doing high probability trend trades you're going to want to have price and the small triggers on the correct side of the eight two large triggers so what that means is look right here to the left price and small triggers are below the eight two large triggers no matter what color you make them and that's going to be your easy trend trade short and you know eventually look in an extended trend the market's going to go down so much that you know by the time you make a retracement your price and your small triggers are actually above the eight two triggers so what do you do well this is where we have to go defer to our 14 two chart and if the 14 two chart agrees we'll take one more short trade with the trend if it doesn't we won't and we'll look at some examples of that so again eventually you're going to make a bottom and again any fib that gets hit and no triggers break even on the 5-1 chart usually will turn the trend and then again keep in mind this idea price and small triggers on the correct side of the 8-2 large triggers so when you're looking for a long trade you want your small triggers even if they cross down it doesn't matter as long as they don't get below the 8-2 large triggers you're fine so they need to come down in order to get filled right so when we're going long we want price and small triggers above the large eight triggers and then we get pretty easy trades once we get price and small triggers below the eight two triggers especially if the background color changes this is where we're going to have to manage or exit our positions if it doesn't follow through because it'll reverse so a mistake that a lot of rookies will make and again I've you know I'm trying to circumvent all of the mistakes you can make so again I know there's a lot of information but you'll get used to it. it's pretty simple resistance not four triggers past it which means you can't go long so what will happen and again I put these two side by side so you can see them. this a is the same as this a over here on the 5-1 chart so you know again new users will go oh look a trend trade on the 5-1 chart and again it's going to be low probability because of the large chart look at a over here resistance with the triggers below it so again this is where you're going to have a mismatch between the large chart and the small chart now just as quickly the market goes down from resistance with the triggers below it not a surprise and you get one of those divergence line retests with the triggers all above it this is what we call a pivot stop out pivot stop out of a prior divergence low and because not four triggers are below it it's going to go back up and again as a new user you're going to see short trade over here on your small chart and you're going to get really excited you're going to be like oh, i'm going short right here triggers and fibs come together and you're going to end up losing your trade and you're going to be like why did I lose and it's because you traded into a termination condition on the 14-2 chart that's not favorable this over here is our short trade and this over here for our edge traders is our long trade and again it you know not that we're talking about edge trading but if you have a termination condition you can't go long and you can't go short or you're going to end up losing your trades one of the things you'll hear us talk a lot about is divergence and quite simply divergence is calculated automatically in our indicator so you don't really have to do anything it's a negative number that plots on the higher low and it's calculated by 
measuring the distance on our MACD indicator, which we don't really use anymore. We just use it for the divergence. So we got rid of the oscillator at the bottom. Uh, but it's very simple. Price makes lower lows. MACDs make higher highs. We have divergence. Um, so again, what we're doing is, you know, Fibonacci retracements between the swings. So if the MACDs are going up faster than price, you know, so this swing measured be between this swing, there's not going to be a divergence. So it's just nothing will plot there. So it's no big deal. Um, and again, when you see the market go up and make a 40% retracement and the MACDs only make an 18% retracement, we're going to have divergence. Don't worry about the size of the number. Worry more about the look of your indicators and what support or resistance is there, and then you'll end up with the right trades. Um, I just wanted to show you this. I show this in class all the time. <clears throat> this is from our trading plan from 2004, 2005. And one of the things that we used divergence for back then was to sell off of resistance after the trigger lines crossed over. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And again, we used to manually calculate this divergence, higher highs in price versus lower highs in MACDs. Now you guys get a negative number, and we still use uh, the logic today. And again, there's two ways where we're really going to use divergence. Number one, a terminator divergence. And when divergence happens from Fibonacci resistance or support, it will usually terminate the trend and make the market go the other way. Again, look at this from 2004. Again, we've been doing the same thing for so long. Resistance, divergence, sell a pullback to the triggers after they roll over. You look at this picture. This is from 2018. Divergence at resistance, sell a pullback to the triggers after they roll over. Anyway, it's worked for a long time, let's just say. Um, so, again, there's two different types of divergences. Number one, if you get a single divergence way out in the middle of nowhere all by itself, usually that will get you back to the support area that you're looking to buy with the trend. If you have divergence from a key area, you're going to stop taking trend trades. Maybe you go the other way or do trend trades after the triggers roll. Again, if you have divergence in the middle of nowhere, it usually will exceed the prior pivot or down bar. And then the market will continue with the trend. And we're going to use this a lot when we're looking at trades or whether we decide not to trade. So again, Looking at your large chart with A, our triggers are going up and they're physically above the FIB. So this is going to be your initial long trend trade, which is really great. It wins. If you hit FIBs with divergence, remember what we said? No more 5-1 trend trades. It's a perfect looking trend trade, but it's going to lose. And again, the ability for you guys to skip the losers and take the winners is where we really excel and separate ourselves. So again, it takes a little getting used to because it looks exactly the same as when you're going to win. But because you came from fibs with divergence, you're going to lose. And then, you know, eventually, look, the large chart said it's going to go up still. And it does. But this is where our edge traders usually get those trades. So again, which ones do you take when they look perfect and which ones do you skip when they look perfect and why? Again, this is from this is from Friday, actually, uh, from yesterday. So look, if the market's going down and you get short, we're going to also use divergence to manage our position. So remember what we said about keeping the small triggers and price on the correct side of the eight two triggers. Well, if small triggers in price get on the wrong side, stay on the wrong side, and then eventually you have this divergence, you're going to get out of your position after the second bar up. And that's when divergence is really true. So two bars up and you're out. So if you were short, you'd be out about break even, no harm done. And what normally happens with divergence is it's going to get you back up to a higher resistance. Well, there was no resistance until we hit resistance. And then usually this, remember when we said if the 14-2 chart still agrees, then we'll do one more short trade. Um, and again, you'll see the same 
process over and over. You know, short trades when it's going down is great, but again, if you get divergence on the low, especially if you barely overrun fibs, this is where the small triggers and price on the wrong side have a tendency to make the market go back up again a little bit further. So it's almost the same look. You get a trend trade short because you're going short on the way up, but you have to manage. And again, remember those yellow one-to-one -one dots? Pretty powerful stuff. So yellow one-to-one -one dots, price above, small triggers above, it fails to go down. Again, we use that a lot in our management techniques. Um, let me show you another chart because, again, this is a very common occurrence. Look at the 5-1 chart over here, two white circles. So we have two divergences. Two divergences almost always creates a pivot stop out, number one, of the prior high, but number two, it usually will get you back up to resistance. And again, remember what we said about small triggers and price being on the wrong side of the 8-2 triggers. If the 14-2 chart has fibs, or even a mid-band can help, but fibs, we can still go short one more time. So we don't want to, you know, again, look, when we're below price and, and small triggers are below the 8-2, it's really simple. When you get on the other side above it, it's you know it's not that we'll never go down again. We will, but you have to have a 14-2 chart helping you, or else you're going to end up, you know. And again, you don't want to miss this money because 28.75 down to 28.40, you know, that's 350 dollars per contract. That's a whole daily goal right there in one move in 20 minutes. So we don't want to miss that trade. But again, when you're doing 5-1 trend trades, again, this is where the divergences will make the market go higher. Then you have to read your larger charts. You'll see this happen a lot. Here's an example of you know what it would look like as you're going. So again, look, strong triggers down, triggers below. We're probably going short at 32.45. And again, that's because it's the fib resistance here and here and here. And so somewhere right here, we're going short. And what happens is you know, the conditions start to change on us and we start to get what we call kind of a loose condition. So if you were short, do the 14-2 chart. You know, when we say a loose look, this is a look where you have to really be on your toes and ready to manage a position. Because, you know, again, large triggers down here, resistance is up here, everything is spread out and very, very loose. Um, so these are, you know, a lot of times you'll get divergence or divergence pivot stop out that'll make you end up losing your trade. So if you find yourself in a position against the color and all the indicators aren't really helping you, you want to exit your position for a profit. And then, you know, this is the opposite. Obviously, the trend changed. And when all the indicators get really compacted together, this is a more favorable look for going up. So we've got mid bands, fibs, yellow one to one dots, and triggers all in a relatively tight area. This is a more ideal look for long trades. And again, you don't always know it going into it. Sometimes it's, it's good going into it, but then it gets loose. And if it gets loose, then you have to manage. And divergence will usually get you out of your looser trades. Now, this is the same spot on the same day two hours later. And it's literally the same trade, 32.45 short. Triggers are down, triggers are down, and triggers are down, and we end up selling 32.45 area again. It's the exact same spot, but look at the look. You got your mid band, you got your fib, you got your triggers, and everything is right there. And ultimately, with that look, you end up with better results, and there's no management necessary you're just in for a win so again you're going to see you know some of this is a bit redundant obviously long trend trade pretty easy read and then you get two divergences and anytime you get two divergences and you have very weak triggers on your larger chart usually that terminates a trend or it makes it go down considerably further 
So again, two divergences, it's going to terminate your 5-1 trend trades. This is, a, you know, something that happened the other day in class. And again, talking about location. So again, if the triggers are crossed up, but they're literally located below the blue fib, usually the long trades don't follow through. And, you know, again, it's kind of indicative of a breakout to the downside. When four triggers are below a fib, if the 8-2 chart and the 5-1 chart come together, then you can take that breakout to the downside. And again, before you get into a position short, especially if there's no divergence on the small chart first and there's no area that stopped the market and made it bounce back up, usually you get a really nice breakout trade as long as the triggers are located below the FIP. And again, a little bit redundant. Small triggers inside of the large triggers and then divergence exactly from a FIB on the small chart terminates the trend. Very, very, very common. It happens literally every day. And again, I want you to think about, you know, the two trades we teach are divergence at FIBs and then we get in after a pivot stop out to go long. And then if everything is trending up, we do trend trades. And then if we get multiple divergences, especially at the edge of FIBs, usually the market goes the other way. So the same thing that creates a trade for us at the edges is also the same thing that stops trend trades. So you want to do them when everything's going up and you want to stop them when you have divergence at FIBs. One of the other things that divergence will do that we talked about is divergence will exceed a prior pivot low but the market will still go up and again you'll see this a lot fibs will hold triggers will roll you'll get a long trade and then eventually you'll get a divergence and because the triggers are still so strong we're going to do a long trade and when you have divergence you usually will take out that last low pivot before you go long and we did a trade like this the other day in class where we had you know, triggers going down pretty good, right? And again, when you label your triggers, you're going to do a lot better with trading. Very strong down triggers, which means we're going to go short, but we're not going to use the first area this time. And again, I remember we said if they're both really, really strong, you're going to use the first area. Well, if you have divergence, it may go a little bit further back to the last pivot. So in this case, instead of the first area, it was the second area. And again, if you got in at the first area, it's not really going to hurt you if it goes to the second area as long as you don't get stopped out. Um, so again, had you have sold at the mid band, you'd still be fine. You'd still make a bunch of money. Um, but again, this divergence beforehand usually gets it to the last pivot and that creates a little better entry area for you. Um, you're also going to use divergence for, um, you know, or the potential for divergence at FIBs, you're going to have to wait, right? So if you reach FIBs and prior divergence lines, again, if it's really strong, it'll probably break, which this one actually did because it was strong. Um, but again, reaching the area means no more trend trades in that direction until something breaks. And again, we're going to use... You know, again, kind of the same techniques for entries and exits and management. If you're going long and you have super strong triggers up and strong triggers up on your 8.2 and you do a trend trade on your 5.1 chart, if you reach your target, stop doing trend trade longs until it either breaks or rolls. It's just that simple. If you reach a target, stop doing trades until the area breaks or it rolls down. Um, this is another case of having two divergences on the smaller chart. And again, this is the one that traditionally is going to get new users more often than not. Because of the divergence, especially two, we have to anticipate we're going to take out the last low. So if you're doing a trend trade from your mid band, with divergence in front of you, you're going to end up getting stopped out as it takes out the last low before it goes up. 
and it's you know again it creates a little bit of frustration so again just think about if you have multiple divergences ahead of you think about where is the farther away area not doing the 5-1 trend trade and again if the large chart very much agrees with the edge of fibs holding that creates a different style of trade than a trend trade but multiple divergences ahead of it will make you lose that trade and again this is another one where you know had you have gone long at a little farther away spot trigger lines and things not agreeing with you and divergences you're going to have to manage out of your position so you may take it because of the large chart but you're also you know you really need the small chart to look good at the same time another example two divergences creating a larger retracement back to 14.2 areas so again just to simplify it we should still go down so we want to get in at these higher areas and sometimes you get into a trade at a higher area and the darn thing doesn't stop so again from a management perspective if all of your indicators change meaning triggers up triggers up and green background exit your position and sometimes you know you're still going to get a little bit of a bounce so sometimes you can exit your position for a little bit of a profit and you don't have to actually take a loss when the market keeps going up because all of your conditions change so again just for a simple management technique if you're in a position especially these last ones from a 14-2 chart if everything changes too much just get out of your position and wait you know again the concept of your trigger lines and everything being very loose and far away from each other makes trend trades not work out very well now again we've talked a couple of times about trading from the edges the most important concept for trading from the edges is making sure that your trigger lines agree and again I won't go through this you can watch the edge trading video but for edge trades our rules are really simple reach an area of resistance have divergence beforehand and then because divergence is already there it's going to make that magenta line and then that's where we're going to place our limit order to go short at the magenta line so as a retest pivot stop out that's our counter trend trade short and again if you know if the large chart agrees you're going to do the same thing at the bottom divergence first waiting for the retest pivot stop out of that prior divergence at the edge is a really really powerful way to make a trade and again just going back to this trend trade that we made short that we had to manage out of it turned into a pivot stop out at the edge so again as you you know progress through your learning curve and you start adding in not only trend trades but maybe some of the edge trades with the trend on the large chart and again just to tie back in a concept we talked about remember when we said that the large triggers need to be very far away sometimes we call it a large gap to the triggers the farther away the triggers are on the 14-2 chart the more likely it is the resistance is going to hold and ultimately that is the only key to making sure that you're doing high probability edge trades making sure that the large chart agrees and you know again when you're in a counter trend trade you're also able to manage pretty quickly and it never hurts taking a profit when you pull back into your triggers that are all crossed going the other way now one of the other things that you're going to see is a mixed trigger on the large chart which is perfectly acceptable for taking a trade if you guessed it you have perfect areas that are nice and tightly compacted together on your 8-2 chart with strong triggers didn't hit any trouble spots and you've got a nice perfect entry to go along with your small triggers below your large triggers so again everybody says well the large were crossed up so I can't go short and that's not the case the large triggers can be going up but the small triggers really gauge the short-term momentum and if they're strong and down then you can take a perfectly tight compacted trend trade to the short side on your small chart 
again, you're going to kind of see this look and you're going to be tempted by this look a lot. That's why I put a couple of examples in here. And again, look, small triggers going down. And again, you've hit FIB support. So again, the alarm bell should be going off saying that short trades are going to be lower probability. But the small charts are going to tempt you into a position sometimes. And again, whether, you know, this is where you have to practice these trades and keep a tally on how good you are, how not good you are at these trades. If it's really tightly compacted and lots of fib resistance, you may take it. Bear in mind, if you get divergence or any type of reason why this one's going to fail, when you have a low probability look on your large chart mixed with the divergence or a fib or a pivot stop out on your small chart you have to exit that trade and wait for everything to be high probability again so to put a simple rule in for you on these types of trades if you have a 50 50 look you remember this picture from the beginning where the large triggers were above and small triggers below fibs and you decide ultimately because of the very strong triggers on the 8-2 chart that you're going to take a trend trade on your 5-1 chart, anything, divergence, pivot stop outs, you run into anything, you get out of that trade as quick as you can and you only do it once and you wait until all the triggers either break below or all the triggers break back above for another high probability trade. So again, getting the right entry and being very quick to manage in a 50-50 trade is very, very important. So again, keep in mind, trend trading is going to be your bread and butter. It's going to be your main trade. And again, we're very, very committed to defining and refining these trading conditions for you over the last 23 years. And again, it's the fine little details in really having consistency in your read of your fibs and triggers that's going to set you apart from anything you've ever done before remember the high and moderately high probability trades are going to give you the smoothest most reliable equity curve and more importantly confidence in your trade setups you have to be confident that you've got the right look low probability trades again if you have large charts that don't agree or termination conditions are going to fail often so annotating your charts right one of the most important things you can do and you've seen it on every one of my charts is write the trigger line strength for each of the charts on your 14.2 and 8.2 making sure that you're only doing the correct trades initially post your charts win lose or draw in the classroom for the first month or two so we can make sure you've got the reads correctly and ultimately, you're going to end up with this in your brain, which is going to be very simple for your trend trades. Make sure your large and medium charts have the correct trigger lines and they agree with the long or short and that all three of your charts have synergy. Number two, make sure you haven't run into a target or termination condition. And then number three, with synergy make sure that you're placing your entry orders at the spot where you're supposed to be taking your trade at the triggers at the fibs mid bands or one to ones that are inside of the triggers keep those things together keep posting your trades in the classroom and we look forward to your success with trend trades